Recently, my niece Hannah had a go at needle felting a kit. She never needle felted before and was excited to make her first needle felted dinosaurs. But she really struggled because the instructions in this fairly cheap kit didn't go into detail and didn't have enough helpful images. In the end, she had to turn to YouTube for extra help. So I wanted to see if I could find a needle felting kit that is truly for beginners. Are either of these kits going to help you get better at needle felting? Or will you be frustrated by the instructions? And are they good value for money? Well, let's find out. As we go along, I'm going to give out points for various things such as quality of needles and wool and how helpful the picture and instructions are. And at the end I'll tell you my honest opinion and reveal the total score for both these kits that I bought on Amazon. You could make me into a kit? Uh, yeah, I guess so. What do you mean, I guess so? I'd make an amazing kit. So the first of the two kits is described as the Halifty Needle Felting for Beginners Panda Cat Kit. There are lots of similar kits available on Amazon that are slightly different in design. I plumped for this one as I loved her cute panda bag. This panda kit is £8.99 at the moment, which is around US$11.40 and it has a review rating of 4.6 out of 5 on Amazon. But is it suitable for beginners to needle felting and kits as the listing implies and is it really that good? The second kit is described as the Crafty Kit Company Mr. Mole DIY Needle Felting Craft Kit for Beginners. This kit cost me £17 or around US$21.50 also from Amazon. The Crafty Kit Company has lots of other felting kits that they describe as easy peasy or suitable for beginners and supervised children over the age of 10. On Amazon this kit has a rating of 4.5 out of 5 so it'll be interesting to see whether it lives up to that. This is how the Panda Kit arrived. The packaging is pretty small and basic. Everything comes in a plastic bag which does protect the wool from any moths but the amount of plastic used isn't great. So this kit has marks for protection from pests but nothing for eco-friendliness or for its looks. The packaging for Mr Mole kit is much more attractive. I would be very happy to give this to someone as a gift. It certainly looks a higher value kit. Let's see what's inside. Before I open it I notice that you can see inside through the handles of the cardboard packaging and that the wool is open to the elements which doesn't give it much protection from any moths. However they have used no plastic in their packaging. Even the needles came in a firm paper bag so it has done very well in being eco-friendly. Overall this packaging is getting 6 out of 10. So let's see what needles you get with the cheaper kit. Actually I am impressed that you get two different gauged needles with this kit. Two of each size. So four needles in total. And it explains in the instructions that you use the different needles for different purposes. The thicker one to start out and the finer one for details and a smoother finish. Looking at the needles you get with the Mr Mole kit you get three of the same gauge of needle which look very similar to the fine needle from the Panda Cat kit. I'll let you know how I get on with these needles as I felt these two kits. And I'm going to test the needles from both kits later on in the video in what I'm calling Needle Felting Nerd Time. Needle Felting Nerd Time! What are you doing? Oh, we thought it needed a jingle, so we made one. Okay, anyway. Let's have a look at the wool you get with the Panda Cat kit. Well, it doesn't look a massive amount of wool, but you do get quite a few colours. Black, pink, yellow, orange, tan, and quite a bit of white. The wool is roving or tops wool, which isn't always the best wool for a complete beginner. It feels quite soft, not quite as scratchy as the wool I previously reviewed from Amazon, but not as soft as the wool I bought from a decent craft supply shop. It does look very clean though, there's no foliage at all. So for quality and quantity of the wool, I'll give it a 6 out of 10. But for the Mr Mole kit, as you can see, there really is a lot more wool, which the packaging describes as Corriedale felting wool. It's all carded sliver wool, which means it comes in a long sliver, which will be much easier for a beginner to use and it feels lovely and soft. You get a large amount of white, some lovely dark grey wool that has flecks of white in it, and some pink. The only downside is I found one or two bits of foliage in the wool which is fine you just have to pick them out as you go overall i was really impressed so i'm giving this kit a 9 out of 10 for the wool we'll come back to talk about the match you get with each kit at the end to see how well they withstand me making the kits but as you can see they're very similar in size and shape both are foam mats, however the Mr Mole kit is a recycled foam mat. Now let's have a look at the instructions. I think clear instructions can really make a kit a lot more enjoyable and it's a big part of what you're paying for. When you buy furniture from Ikea for example, you know that you'll get lots of detailed images and quite clear instructions on how to build it. But if you buy something cheap,
cheaper from a random furniture shop, you run the risk of having to work out how to assemble a whole wardrobe just from one diagram. Can you tell I've learnt this the hard way? Because the instructions are such an important part of the kit, I'm going to allocate 10 points for the written instructions and 10 points for the pictures and any other visual aids. So let's see if the instructions are IKEA or no idea in these differently priced kits. So looking at the Panda Cat instructions, I noticed that they sounded like they'd been translated from another language. For example, it says the novice, easy to break the needle, but most of the time you get the gist of what they're trying to say. In fact, I was quite impressed that the general instructions explained how firm the felted item should be. The instructions that came with the Crafty Kit Company Mole Kit it also gave some general hints and tips on stabbing straight in and out to protect the needle, and a brief description on how to create a ball. Generally, they are easier to understand than the Panda Cat instructions. This mole kit says that it should take about three hours to complete in total, and it also gives how long each step should take, which does give you an indication of how long to stab it for. I'm going to time myself while making this mole, and we'll see how long it does take me in total, and how firm the mole is at the end. By the way, if you've bought either of these kits, or similar kits, let me know in the comments how you found them. I'd love to hear your experience. As I started making the Panda Cat, I realised that the written instructions and images didn't give you much guidance on how much white wool to use for the head, which is something I know a lot of you struggle with. The instructions did mention that you should start with less wool than you think and gradually add more to build up the size, which is good advice. They also gave you three images that are the actual size you're aiming for, which is really helpful in getting the size and shape of the head and body right. And they tell you to check your wool against these images repeatedly. This is something I try to help with as much as possible on my PDF instructions for Santa, where as well as actual size templates for each part, I give you a template for the size of the wool after it's been rolled up but before it's been felted, so that you can actually compare your wool to that image to give you an idea of whether you have the right amount of wool. Although this kit doesn't do that, it is helpful to have the actual sized images of the finished item to refer to. Sadly, the Mr. Mold instructions don't contain any templates or actual sized images, but they do give very clear instructions on how much white wool to use for the head and body by splitting the wool up before you begin, which did make sure I had more than enough for the whole project. Then it explains how to create the head and body by knotting the slivers, although the instructions didn't say how tight these knots should be and could have been a bit more descriptive and helpful in explaining how to needle felt the shape of Mr Mole's body. When it came to the Panda Cat's white hood, because of the way it was made it was impossible to add more wool later. You had to get the right amount of wool before you attached it to get the right thickness around her face. At first I hadn't got enough so I had to add a bit more. To be honest I left the front edge quite softly felted so that it looked a bit thicker as I think it could have stood even more wool. Because the instructions are so vague I was concerned about the quantity of white wool I had left so before I made the body I decided to work out how much white wool I needed for the body, legs, arms, tail and panda bag. If I hadn't done this I'm pretty sure I would have run out of white wool. When making the mole I followed the timing suggested on the instructions as if I was a beginner. I found it quite difficult to create an egg shape for the body and it was a lot softer than I would normally felt after the 25 minutes it suggested. I can see that this will get a beginner quicker results but I do worry that in future projects you struggle to add details to such a soft base. When it came to making the body for the panda cat the written instructions were very sparse. There were some good instructions explaining a technique that would help beginners to be able to make two legs the same size and a useful technique for smoothing over the joins. But at times the instructions do make you feel like you're in a needle felting version of the technical round of the Great British Bake Off where the contestants get instructions like make the dough with no details on how exactly to do that. For example here's what it says for the nose. Knead the pink wool into a small ball and poke it out a triangle to be a nose. Basically make the nose. <laughs> it doesn't say how much of the pink wool by the way. There's this much pink wool and I'm going to use probably not even going to use that much. I don't use that much. I ended up starting a nose realising I had too much wool and then making a new nose with even less wool. But if you were an absolute beginner I think you would really struggle with the nose and mouth details and later there's an extremely fiddly task of felting an even tinier nose on the panda bag. Oh that's cute. Will you make me a panda bag? Um. Oh yes, can I have one too? Me too. Really Elsie? I didn't think it was your style. What are you saying? That little bag would totally vibe with my aesthetic. Of course, yeah. Um, 
Okay, uh, unfortunately, there were also times when making Mr. Mole that I felt like I experienced what I'm now going to call the technical round syndrome. For example, the instructions to make the snout did give you a specific amount of wool, which is great, but then it didn't really explain how to felt the wool into a snout. I think a beginner might have struggled a bit with this. Also, it doesn't explain how to add a thin line for the mole's mouth. But if you're looking for help on felting thin lines and face details, I also have a PDF giving lots of detailed instructions on this. I'd really appreciate it if you can support me in this way. It really helps me to be able to keep making these videos. So overall, for the panda cat written instructions, out of a possible mark of 10, I'll give it a 4, because there was quite a lot missing. For the Mr. Mole, I'm going to give it a solid 7 out of 10. They were easier to understand, but they could have been a bit more descriptive and helpful for the absolute beginner. There was one thing that the panda kit offered that the mole kit didn't have that I found really helpful, though. That was a QR code link to a YouTube channel showing a video tutorial for the panda cat. I found I referred to this quite a few times, especially when I couldn't understand the written instructions or images. For example, when the instructions talked about shredding the wool, I didn't have a clue until I watched the video and realised it basically meant hand card the wool like this, which will make the roving wool easier to use and help get a smooth finish. Sometimes, though, even watching the video didn't really help much. There isn't any verbal or text instructions on it in English, and applying the coloured wool so that it looked like a ginger cat was quite challenging, and even the YouTube video wasn't much help. The images in the cat instructions are okay. They do give you an idea of what you need to do, and as I've said already, the images that are the actual size are really helpful to see where the arms, ears, and other details are attached. There are 60 images in total for the panda cat kit, three of which are actual size images, whereas for the Mr. Mole kit there was only 24 images. However, the images in these instructions were about four times as big as the panda cat images. Generally, the pictures were very useful for the body shaping and attaching the hands and feet. The downside to the Mr. Mole images was that they had a white background which sometimes made it hard to see the white or pink wool shapes. The instructions also mention pulling some wool over the mole's eyes, but doesn't explain it very well. And when you look at the image, because it's black wool over black eyes, it's very hard to see what they mean. But overall, I'd say the images for both kits helped me understand the instructions better. But the fact that the Panda Cat kit had a a video and an actual sized image to follow means that I'm going to give that kit 8 out of 10 for the visual instructions, whereas Mr. Mole only gets 6. The scores are closer than I thought at the moment, but there's still the question of whether the kits are worth the price and suitable for beginners, which I'll get to in a moment. But first, let's have a quick look at how the mat stood up to being stabbed. The white foam mat that came with the Panda Cat kit is quite small, but okay for this size of project. But as it's foam, it started to get quite soft and won't last long. The black recycled foam mat that came with the Mr. Mole kit hasn't lasted very well either. But to be honest, I expected a slightly larger mat than this, as the mole finish size is a lot larger than the mat. So I'm going to give the Panda Cat kit a 6 out of 10 for the mat, and deducting 1 point for the size of the mat that came with the mole kit, so it gets a 5 out of 10. If you've watched other videos of mine, you may have seen me turn into a bit of a nerd and count how many times times I've stabbed wool for. Well, I thought this would be a good way of testing the needles that came with the kits. So it's now needle felting nerd time. Needle felting nerd time. Are you going to do that every time I mention it? Yep. Great. So I'm taking three similar sized pieces of carded Corridale slither wool and rolling each one up tightly and stabbing it 600 times. For the first piece of wool, I'm using the thick needle from the Panda Cat kit. For the second, I'm using the needle that came with the Crafty Kit Company Mole kit. And for the third, I'm using my usual fine needle, which is a 40 gauge triangular needle to compare it with. So I'm squeezing the wool felted with the Panda Cat kit needle on the left and the wool felted with the Mole kit needle on the right. And it does look like the wool where I use the Panda Cat needle is firmer after the same number of stabs. If I compare the wool stabbed with the Panda Cat kit needle with the wool stabbed with my usual 40 gauge needle, they seem about the same. But the wool felted with the Mole kit needle is softer than my 40 gauge needle piece. However, I wonder whether I've accidentally not rolled the wool for the Mole kit needle quite as tightly as the others. So being a glutton for punishment, I got another piece of wool and made sure I rolled it tightly this time and stabbed it using the Mole kit needle for 600 stabs. And it was a bit firmer than the first attempt. There was a bit less of a difference between this wool and the wool felt 
pelted by the panda cat needle. But the wool felted with the panda cat needle was still very slightly firmer. So overall for needles, I think both kits have provided good quality needles. I was very pleasantly surprised by the panda cat needles. They gave us two sizes of needles and it seemed to felt the wool slightly quicker than the mole kit needle. So I've given the panda cat <coughs> kit 9 out of 10 for the needles and the Mr. Mole kit 8 out of 10. So value for money wise, I think the panda cat kit is overall worth the cost of £8.99. I did only just have enough white wool, there was none spare, but I had plenty of the rest of the colours once it was complete. And don't forget the four decent needles in two sizes. It came with good quality eyes that I think makes it even cuter. And you also got various fixtures that you could attach if you want to make it into a handbag charm. However, you do get plenty of wool with the Crafty Kit Company Mole Kit. I had lots of white left over, even more of the black and some pink, but then the price of the kit was almost double that of the Panda Cat Kit at £17. The wire that came with the kit to make his glasses was very easy to bend and the instructions for that were very good. I was a little disappointed that the newspaper shown on the box wasn't supplied. Instead it suggested I cut a piece from the newspaper or magazine. I did my best with some IKEA instructions which had some suitably tiny writing but it doesn't give the same look as the one on the box. Perhaps they could have printed it out as part of the instructions so that we could cut it out and use that. But this is a minor thing really. So for fun value for money I'm giving Panda Cat Kit a very good 9 out of 10 and the Mr Mole Kit as it's quite a lot more money is 7 out of 10. That means that the Panda Cat Kit has made a bit of a comeback. There's only one point in it so it's all down to the final category. It's very exciting. You need to get out more. Yeah, you're probably right. So how suitable are these kits for a beginner? Are they as easy peasy as they say? Well, the Panda Cat kit did make it easier by having actual sized images to refer to and the YouTube video to watch. And they did give you a ready-made eyes, which meant there was less detail to felt. I actually learned a couple of new techniques in making this Panda Cat, which really helped with the shaping. She was fun to make and I'm really pleased with how she turned out. The Panda Cat looks so cute when she's finished on the pictures on Amazon. They even have a story up but then I noticed how she was able to stand up. Ouch that's got to be painful. Yeah the instruction should say pin in the bottom not included. <laughs> <laughs> The mole kit also gives you some glass eyes and gave some good tips on building up layers and they designed the hands in such a way that made them really easy for a beginner to needle felting, basically making pieces of felt to cut the shape of a hand out of. However this could have been made even easier had they given a template for cutting round to get the right size of hand. I just used the first hand as a template for the rest but this wasn't suggested in the instructions and I shaped them a bit more than they suggested so I cheated slightly. Sometimes I just can't help myself. Also the way the mole's hands and arms were attached to the body made shaping the arms much easier for a beginner. The instructions could have been a bit more in depth at times and they could have provided some actual sized images. My finished mole is certainly not 20 centimeters tall as stated on the box. I don't think their mole is 20 centimeters either. By the way in the end it took me around three and a half hours to complete which is close to the three hours that the box stated. So the final score for the beginner suitability out of a possible 10. For Mr Mole Kit I'm giving it an 8 because they've really thought about keeping the design simple and making what could have been difficult parts really easy. And for the Panda Cat I'm giving a 4. Yeah, lovely though the Panda Cat is, I can't really recommend this as a beginner to needle felting kit. It has a lot of fiddly small design elements that would suit an intermediate needle felter or at the very least someone who has felted a couple of times before. So the winner by just five points is the Crafty Kit Company's Mr Mole Kit. If you're an absolute beginner you're more likely to get a finished item that resembles the image on the box with the Mr Mole Kit. So this kit or the Crafty Kit Company's other beginner kits would make an ideal gift for an absolute beginner to needle felting. So if you are a beginner there's one thing you'll need to master to make your needle felted items looking great and that's knowing how to get the core shape of your project spot on. And in this video I don't just show you a way to improve your shaping but I share a lot of shaping tips along the way that will make your items look amazing. Thanks for watching.